Just take this Ohm's law, very simple, V equal to I R T. Material mean, me, me, metallic, metallic material, V equal to I R. But how that V equal to I R comes from the electrodynamics equations? So you have free electrons, you have a scattering of electrons, you have defects in the material, those defects are scattering the electrons and you have mean free path of the electron and so on so on. That gives the resistance. That gives the property of resistance in the material. Now this uh, mean free path of this free electron, if you are a macro size, this mean free path is very small as compared in compared to the size of the material or thickness of the wire for example and you have this Ohm's law but what happens if the thickness is reduced and the thickness becomes smaller than mean free path is the same copper wire okay it's the same copper wire but if the diameter of that copper wire is made smaller than the mean free path of these free electrons then Ohm's law will not operate there so that is how the nano science becomes different from macro science. Okay. Yeah, next. So uh, iron is BCC and uh, copper is FCC. But if you go for nano size, you don't know whether it will be there or not. Once again, uh, it's a manifestation of some crystal bonding, some uh, this Wonderwall equation, uh, interaction, and so on. And the total, if the total size is small, then uh, these things can be very different. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, for a bulk size iron, you have domain structure, right? You have domains, so many domains, and all the domains are uh, clubbed uh, in different directions and so on. But if you go for 14 nanometer or below, then iron particles remain single domain. Right? So why a nail? becomes a magnet when you rub it with a strong bar magnet because of all these domains which are there uh, where the domain walls are separating different domains with different directions of magnetic moments these domain walls shift uh, and uh, you get big big domains having uh, magnetic moments aligned with uh, uh, the field given by that bar magnet but if uh, the domains are all separate from each other, one here, another there, single domain particles, you won't get that permanent magnet by rubbing it or putting it in a magnetic field. So it's very different. It's called super paramagnetic. It's a kind of paramagnetic, super paramagnetism. Right? Yes. And with that 4 nanometer zinc ferrite, it was attracted by magnet very well, whereas the bulk zinc ferrite is a paramagnetic material, it is not attracted. So at, the, at that level, the science is, lot has to be discovered. Yes, go ahead. Similar, this is the magnetization versus the uh, applied field plot for the zinc ferrite. Yes, go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. These are the energy bands, continuous energy bands separated by gaps, gives all kinds of semiconductor applications. But then if you go for nanomaterials, perhaps you do not have those continuous bands anymore. Even those continuous bands are also, they become discrete. And then of course the gap is there. So you will get a totally different kind of uh, class of materials. And if you can control the properties, you can have very different applications. Color, optical properties, color. This is the gold. Uh, but uh, this is also gold. <laughs> It's only a matter of size. This is the same material, cadmium, selenium, core, and zinc sulfide shell. It is the same material. Uh, only the size are different and you can see the colors are totally different from each other. If uh, you, you take a carbon nanotube and flow water through those carbon nanotubes, uh, if you look at carbon nanotubes in a, on a piece of paper, it will look like a talcum powder. Okay, it will not look like a tube. It will be a tube only when you see through uh, scanning electron microscope or, or some, some such thing at that level. But all these tubes are, they themselves are of uh, 
nanometer size, few tens of nanometers or few hundreds of nanometer size, and all these things put together on a piece of paper on it or in a tube, glass tube. It just looks like a powder. So if you put that in a sample and flow water through it, EMF is generated. Right? But you don't do that uh, where you just put your plastic water in your stream. You do not generate electricity by that. Yeah. What is the reason for uh, this difference? So why is it surface? Surface dominates our interior. <laughs> so smaller the size, more is the activity. Uh, when I used to be 60 kilograms, I was very much active. Now I'm 77 kilograms. <laughs> I'm born lethargic. <laughs> okay. I need a very comfortable thing. Yesterday I told them, don't wake me up before 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right. So larger is the size, sir. <laughs> Why it is so, why the smaller particles, smaller uh, beings are more active than the thicker ones? This is because the fraction of particles on the surface and the particles in the interior. Surface means just a few layers, a few molecular layers, that you call surface. And after that inside it is interior. So how many particles are there and what fraction is on the surface? So if you look at that, it uh, just goes like this. The atoms at the percentage, percentage atoms at the surface. So as size decreases, this percent goes, 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 goes up. And by the time you reach some uh, 5 nanometers or 2, 3 nanometers, everything is on the surface. Because uh, some 5 angstrom, etc. would be the thickness of one molecular layer. Right? Angstrom is the atomic size, right? Angstrom is the 10 angstrom is 1 nanometer. So surface would mean typically 1 nanometer or 0.5 nanometer. So if your size reduces to 1 or 2 nanometers, almost everything is on the surface. Uh, whereas if your size is 50 nanometers, then uh, you have a lot of things in the interior. And the things which are on the surface, surely they are much more active. Right? <laughs> Things which are inside the uh, interior, they cannot do much. But if you are made to live right at the fence, uh, the water goes this side and you are on the other side. <laughs> okay? So the things which are on the surface are much more active. Uh, they can do much more chemical activities and well. So that is why the whole behavior of the material is very different when it comes to nano sizes <laughs> than when it is in the interior. Yeah, next thing. Right, second thing, what is surface? The second thing is quantum confinement. You have done some quantum mechanics? Yes, sir. Uh, simplest is that infinite square well potential that you must have done at some point of time. Hmm? So, if you have that infinite uh, square well potential, that means you confine the particle to that width. The particle cannot go beyond this. It has to remain in this. Right? So, what happens to the energies? So, the energy levels are discrete and they change. And this, this is the kind of uh, hydrogen atom, for example. Le electron in a hydrogen atom is confined by that electrostatic force of the proton. So once it is confined, you have uh, discrete energy levels. So quantum confinement, when you, once you confine the particle to a small volume, all that uncertainty principle and everything comes into picture and the physics is different. So these are basically the two, these are surface effect and this quantum confinement. Yeah. Next. Anyway, now come to the technology part. Okay, so this is one of the famous quotes that we would like to use nanomechanics uh, to manufacture consumer goods at the molecular level, piecing together one <coughs> atom or molecule at a time to make baseballs, telephones and cars. Some scientists define this as a major goal of national technology. 
And after that, after this course, a lot of fantasy of, uh, things will be there if we are able to do this. That's what we can do. So you can make fiction movies on that. If you are able to operate at molecular level and you can manufacture things molecule by molecule, you can create anything in the world you like. Right? You want to create diamond, no problem. Put your carbon atoms in that particular geometry and that particular thing, you get diamond. You want to change the shape of your nose. It's okay, you remove some uh, molecules uh, and then whatever shape you want, you can, you can put there. So all kinds of uh, these uh, articles will be there, but that's not science, that's not technology. Yes, not at atomic level, but at uh, say micron level, 100 of nanometer, 10 nanometers, at this scale we are able uh, to do many things. The manufacturing is in advanced state. So these type of uh, nano gears from carbon, now to have been uh, created here, yeah? where these are generators, electricity generators. These are zinc oxide particles, not particles, zinc oxide rods. And when these rods are vibrated by some kind of uh, uh, this uh, AFM tape or something, then electricity is generated. So you can you can have nano generators. Now compare with your uh, current manufacturing units. You need gears, you need motors, you need generators, actuators, and so on. So then welding machine, cutting machine, uh, all those things, lathe machines and all those things. Compare with these. All right. So these type of things which are, are being created, this is again, as I said, carbon nanotube and water is flowing and electricity is being generated. This uh, work has been done at IIS in Bangalore, Akesu published in science. Yeah.